Hey, what's up? Welcome. So let's go over some potential NCLEX dosage calculations. And if you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. So I'll be going over some key points throughout that are crucial. So here is one as an icebreaker. On the NCLEX, you will be provided with a drop down calculator. So you'll need to know how to convert pounds to kilograms and kilograms to pounds. But remember, kilograms will always be less than your pounds. So let's do a weight conversion and convert pounds to kilograms. So let's say Kevin weighs 300 pounds and you need to convert to kilograms for a dose calculation. You will divide 300 divided by 2.2, which equals 136.36 kilograms. Now let's do a weight conversion and convert kilograms to pounds. So let's say Patty weighs 60 kilograms and you need to convert to pounds. You will multiply 60 kilograms multiplied by 2.2, which equals 132. So here's another key point to remember during the NCLEX exam. The answers from your calculations should be rounded towards the end. So do not round till you have the final answer. Okay, let's do a PO medication calculation. The formula method of choice is desired dose, known as D, divided by what's on hand, which is H, multiplied by volume, which is your V, which V is used for your meds that are volume based, which equals amount known as A, which is the amount of medication required for administration. So to recap, desired dose, so that's the D. So for example, the ordering provider requested an order dose divided by what's on hand, which is the H. What's on hand is a dosage of the medication that is available. So here's an example. Your patient has been prescribed 250 milligrams of an antibiotic medication. The antibiotic medication comes in 125 milligram tablets. How many tablets will the RN administer to the patient? So ask yourself, what is a desired dose, which is 250 milligrams and divide that by what is on hand or available, which is 125 milligrams, which equals two tablets. So you will administer two tablets to your patient. A key tip, ideally you should not give more than three tablets of any one PO medication. Generally, if the dose requires more than three tablets, then a higher concentrated dose should be administered per the discretion of the ordering provider. Now let's go over IV push injections. So your client has an order to administer 40 milligrams of Lasix IV times one dose. So what is available? So you have 20 milligrams of Lasix multiplied by 40 milligrams of Lasix. You are going to cross multiply as shown in the demonstration. Once you have canceled out everything, you will see 40 divided by 20 equals two mils. So the RN will administer two mils of the medication. Here is a key tip. Always show all your work because nursing programs will not give partial credit or most of them won't. And remember, if there is a decimal point, it must lead with a zero. For example, 0.5 milligrams should be 0.5 milligrams. Reason is 0.5 could be viewed as five milligrams, which is a huge difference and could be lethal. So take your time and read the question. Okay, let's go over some IV drip rates. Let's start with an example. You have an order for one gram ANSEF and 50 mils of normal saline to infuse over 30 minutes. What is the rate for infusion? You will use this formula. So let's plug in the numbers. So 50 mils divided by 30 minutes multiplied by 60 minutes equals 100 mils per hour. All right, let's move on to the next dosage calculation. So a patient is prescribed 1,000 mils of normal saline to infuse over eight hours. So what is the hourly rate for this infusion of normal saline? So formula of choice is the following mils of solution divided by total hours, which equals an answer of mils per hour. So you wanna divide the total volume of 1,000 mils divided by eight hours, which equals a rate of 125 mils per hour. Now that you have the rate of 125 mils per hour, you'll want to know your drop rate, which is 10 drops per mil. Sometimes it can be 10 drops, 15 drops, or 60 drops per mil. So formula of choice is mils of solution divided by total minutes. And if the question is given in hours, just convert it to minutes. You will then multiply by the drop factor, which equals drops per minute. 
So now we know our hourly rate is 125 mils per hour and our drop rate is 10 mils. Now it's as easy as plugging in numbers. So the equation for the drop rate is prescribed volume, which is 125 mils times the drip factor, which is 10 drops per mil, divided by time in minutes, which is 60 minutes, equals 20.833 mils per hour. All right, let's go over two key tips for medication dosages, beginning with always avoiding trailing zeros. I can't overemphasize this, but trailing zeros is overly emphasized on the NCLEX because the goal is to reduce medication errors. If the question says round to the nearest tenth, you should always write the number as a whole and avoid a decimal. For example, write the number three and not three point zero. Moving on to tip number two, let's do a quick review on maximum volumes for your injections. So intradermal maximum volumes are 0 0.1 mil. This includes your PPD, allergy testing, or lidocaine injections. You also got your subcutaneous injections, administer a volume of 0 0.5 to 1 mil. An example is your Lovenox injections. Um, IM injections are two mils or greater, is administered through the ventrogluteal, which is the preferred and safest for adults, or one to two mils can be administered into the deltoid muscle. An example could be your MMR vaccine or your Tordal injections. And IV injections, such as your IV pushes, you can administer from one to 60 mils. An example could be your Dilaudid IV pushes or your D50 ampules, which is a lot larger dose. Be sure to give me a big thumbs up and check out my community tab for the dosage calculations we covered in today's video and I will see you on the next one. Take care.